this video, I'm just going to cover some of the, the gestures and how you use those to interact with the user interface in Procreate. This video is a, a section from a much larger tutorial video that I've already created. The link for that is down in the description. But for this video, I'm just going to cover the gestures. Now I'm going to go into a canvas. So just to run through some of the finger gestures. When you've got the settings set to standard, I'm just going to go into the standard gesture settings. So a selected tool would be the, the standard settings. So your finger can act as a brush. It would be your smudge tool, like so. It would also be your eraser as well. So your finger would be the main way of enter actually interacting. Personally, I would, I would tend to deactivate the, the finger gestures that actually use the tools and I just use the Apple Pencil instead. You can see that I've just been double tapping with two fingers to undo that. If I want to redo, it's three fingers, two fingers to undo. Now, if I want to create, whilst I'm on here, a quick line, so I do a wobble here, and I hold it down for a, a period of time, and you'll notice it changes, snaps to a line. That's generally more useful, perhaps, when it's a fine line and you're doing something more architectural or something more precise. And you can also notice by Continue to hold on by moving it. You can change the length of it um, as well as the sort of angle of it. If you decide you want to clear a layer and you use three fingers like that, and use a backwards or forwards motion, you'll find that it scrubs and deletes the entire layer. I don't want to do that because I'd put a lot of time and effort in. But sometimes you just want to clear a layer. You want to start from scratch quickly without having to go into the settings on the layer. That's a quick option for doing that. Zooming in and out, obviously, is a sort of pinching quite straightforward. I think we're all used to that gesture now on mobile phones and all sorts of devices. Again, we're rotating canvas, pretty straightforward stuff. Quickly pinch outwards. So if you start like this and you decide you want to see the whole canvas as big as possible, pinch outwards and it fits into the screen. If you wish to have a detail that you've selected and you want to copy and paste it, then you three fingers down and it gives you the option. Now I've got nothing selected at the moment. I mean, if I press copy, it will copy the entire layer and if I paste it again you'll see that it's doubled up that layer so now when I go on to here you'll notice that I've got a repeat of that layer which can be quite useful because you can see how it's intensified the de the layer in itself actually because you can see through a lot of the gestures you won't necessarily have painted everything on a layer 100% so by doubling it up it can sometimes really intensify and make that layer look more interesting but obviously there are shortcuts to that, so you can just copy and paste and it will do it quickly as well. If you want to get rid of all the tool bars and extra clutter on the screen, four fingers, tap, gets rid of it and you can just work. Um, I don't tend to use that very often because I don't find that the interface interferes very much at all. It's a very, very streamlined operating system or interface rather. So I don't find it interferes at all. It's not like some of the other programs out there where you have various different wheels and boxes that are in the middle of the screen cluttering up the, the interface. This is really quite minimal to begin with. So to be honest, that's something that occasionally might do inadvertently, but it's never something I would do deliberately. When you actually on layers, there are different gestures that you can use to affect the layers too. So one of the ones that I do use quite a bit is to merge different layers. So if you wanted to select a whole selection of layers and just make it into one flat image, you can do it like that, just by pinching and dragging them together. I don't wish to do that right at the moment, but it demonstrates that it is quite a useful function. That's something I will definitely use. As I go further and further with a painting, I find it very staged. I've got too many layers and sometimes they can just be condensed and pinched together, and I will do that. Whilst you're in layers, it is also possible to select different layers. So just by tapping with your finger, you will select the different layer uh, and then swiping will select it as a secondary layer as well. Another quick way of getting access to the layer opacity is to double tap it and it will instantly jump to the opacity controls and then by swiping left or right, you probably just notice some details there that disappear as I go down on the opacity and then increase as I go upwards with the opacity. So that's just a quick way of accessing that. So I'll just demonstrate that again on another layer. We go on to here, double tap on that layer with two fingers. Whoops, I've got the layer switch and I'll try that one. Double tap and you'll notice that blue slider at the, the top. By sliding left and right, you'll notice that the changes that I've made along the way. Another thing you can do with the layer is alpha lock it. So if you just take two fingers and swipe to the right, when you tap on there, you'll notice now that it's alpha locked it. If you tap on a layer with two fingers instantly, if you tap and hold with two fingers, it will give you access to all the information in that layer. 
you can see where it's selected it, where it hasn't. 